Baseball Rules Academy presents Baseball Rule of the Week. Not so simple, the rule of catcher's interference. When the bat touches the glove, we've got interference. Now on catcher's interference, which is covered in the rule book at 5.05 B3, if the bat makes contact with the catcher's glove and the pitch is caught by the catcher, here's what happens. Okay. All right, so we've got a ball coming in. The batter swings at it. He hits the catcher's glove. And the ball continues on into the glove. Now what's the umpire going to do? That's interference. Time. You, first base. So the batter's going to be awarded first base on the catcher's interference. Now if the bat makes contact with the catcher's mitt and then the batted ball goes into fair territory, something else happens. Here it is. Okay. Now if the pitch comes in, hits the batter's, the batter's bat hits the glove and the batter now makes contact, the ball goes out into the field, the umpire is not going to call time. He's going to let the play go out. He's pointed at it. He knows he's got interference. Now. If the batter's thrown out of first base, he's going to call time and award him first. But if he hits a double, say, or a triple, or a home run, the batter's going to be able to have that because he went beyond first base. Now, one thing that's important to know if you're a hitter, if, if you hit the catcher's glove, you have interference, you round first and try for second, you might be thrown out of the play and that out's going to stand because you're not protected beyond first base. All right, so in catcher's interference, the ball is dead if the batter swings and misses the pitch. The batter swings and the ball goes foul. And the batter swings and the ball is hit fair, and then the continuous action of the play stops. So what is the penalty on catcher's interference? Well, the batter is awarded first base. The runners advance one base, but only if forced. And the interference is nullified if the batter and all the runners advance at least one base on the play. For instance, if the batter hits a home run, there will be no catcher's interference called. And the batter cannot intentionally create catcher's interference. But wait, there's more. The manager of the team at bat has a choice to accept the catcher's interference or the result of the play. Let's talk about this with Ted Barrett. A play that you see fairly often, especially at the amateur level, is catcher's interference. That's, from the way I understand it, Ted, is when a batter swings, and in the process of his swing, he hits a catcher's glove normally, or part of his equipment, as he uh, tries to swing through and hit the baseball. Uh, some hitters seem to be more guilty of that than others, but nonetheless, it is an infraction on a catcher. Uh, take us through that whole process. Okay, yeah, one thing the umpire, he really, it's tough to see this, so he's calling it on sound. And a lot of times a bat will hit the catcher's glove and what happens after that is important. So the umpire is not going to kill it right away because the ball is alive and in play. The offensive team can end up taking the result of the play rather than the penalty. So now the penalty is uh, the uh, batter is going to get first base and all other runners are going to stay where they originally were unless they were stealing on the play. So for example, you could have a runner at third base Less than two outs, we'll say one out. We have catcher's interference. The bat hits the catcher's glove. A fly ball to the left field. Mm -hmm. The left fielder catches it. Runner at third tags up and scores. Well, the umpire is going to, when the play is over, he's going to say time. Batter, you get first base. Runner, you go back to third. And that's, he, and that's the end of his job. <clears throat> now it's up to the defensive coach or manager to come out and say, hey, I would like to resolve this play. Then the umpire can enforce that. He can call the batter out because he was out on the fly ball and score the run as a result of the play. So it's very important for a coach or a manager to know this rule or even a player. You can remind your coach, hey, we can get a run out of that rather than just having a runner at first and third. So the manager of either team can come out and ask for an enforcement in a different way. For instance, if the batter has catcher's interference and hits a home run, obviously the offensive manager wants the home run rather than the catcher's interference. Yes, but actually in this case, um, since the batter, uh, if he gets to first base or beyond, then we don't enforce the penalty at all. So there's really there's no way for the defensive team to gain an advantage. It's purely the option on the offensive team. Interesting stuff right there. BaseballRulesAcademy.com, 
your number one source for rules of the game.